Hello Smashers and welcome back to a brand new video. Now this week I decided to do a video on the most common mistakes that I see beginners making when they're doing their Amazon FBA product research. So um, I basically had a think of all the mistakes that I most commonly see and we're going to run through them together and I'm going to explain to you um, where you're going wrong and how to make sure that you don't make them when you're doing your Amazon FBA product research. So let's get straight into the video. The first product mistake, product research mistake that I see time and time again is that people aren't setting a goal or understanding how much they want to earn before doing their product research. So I'm getting, you know, like countless emails every single day um, asking me what I think to um, like a Jungle Scout screenshot, like what I think to the, the product that somebody's found. And I always ask the same question. I'm like, have you actually set a goal here? Do you understand like how much you want to make? Like the product that you've sent me could be an incredible product if you only want to make 500 pounds profit a month. Whereas on the other hand, it could be a really poor product if you're looking to make something like 5,000 pounds profit per month. So guys, it is so important that you make sure that you have written down how much you want to earn per month and that you then kind of back solved how many units you'd need to shift in order to hit that profit target. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll put a little um, link in the um, corner of the video um, to a previous video I've done where I talk through exactly how to go about doing that um, when you're starting your product research. So that is the number one mistake that I see um, most commonly, not setting a goal. The next one is using the wrong keyword when searching for product ideas. Now, in order to kind of show you what I mean here, I'm gonna show you on Amazon um, what it can do if you use the wrong keyword. So, let's just jump into Amazon. Now, let's just say, for example, that I wanted to sell head torches. Um, and I decided to go onto Amazon and type in battery powered head torch, which is a keyword to find head torches, right? So let's just say this loaded up and we then go on to Jungle Scout and we search for the results. Just let it load up the sales. And you can see here, if you um, looked at this, you would probably think this doesn't really look a great product. We've got loads here that just are not selling at all. We've got one guy doing 39 a day um, and the rest are doing like three or less. We've got another one here doing 25, but the majority aren't doing too well at all. You might look at that and think, awful product, I'm not going to do it. But look what happens if we do the same search but we just search for head torch. It's the same um, results that are coming up. So it's still head torches coming up, um, but we've used a slightly broader keyword. So look what happens here when we search using just the keyword head torch. So look at that guys, we've just let it load and you can see here we've got a lot more sellers that seem to be doing quite well through selling head torches. And the mistake that was made here is although the keyword was correct in that it is a battery powered head torch, it is too narrow. You're narrowing the um, search results too much so you're not getting a real fair reflection um, of the actual sellers that are selling head torches on Amazon. So the trick is when you're searching for a product, you want to um, do like a Goldilocks style keyword search. So something that's not too hot, i.e. it's not too broad, but also something that's not too cold, so not too specific. So um, too broad here would probably just be torch because you're gonna get loads and loads of irrelevant results. And too specific would be battery powered head torch. So the, the right keyword to use, the just right keyword in this case would be head torch. And that guys is honestly another big mistake that I see people making. They find a product and they use the wrong keyword and as a result of using the wrong keyword, they just get a the completely wrong impression um, of the actual real underlying sales figures for that product. Um, the next one is not removing irrelevant listings from your Jungle Scout search results. So we're gonna jump back into Amazon again. Um, here, I actually had a quick scan earlier and all of these do look 
relevant, so they are all head torches. But let's just say, for example, all of these weren't head torches, they were maybe just torches. It's so important that when you run your jungle scout analysis here, that you remove them. And the reason that we do that is, we only want to see what the sales are like for head torches, which is the product that we're looking to sell. We're not interested in how well a torch or maybe a flashlight or something like that are selling. We're only interested in how well head torches are selling. So what you need to do, as soon as you load your Jungle Scout up, is you need to have a quick scan down like this, move your mouse over each one, and every time you see one that is not relevant to the product we're looking to sell, you just need to move your mouse over here where the little cross is, and you need to take it off. Okay, that again is another big mistake I see. People send me Jungle Scout um, pictures, and I have a quick scan down and I can immediately tell that some of the listings aren't relevant. Um, typically, a good way of kind of understanding if there are irrelevant results in there very quickly is just looking at the price. So this one here is £20.45, but all the others are like £7. So you might think, let me just double check that one. Uh, this one may actually be okay. Okay, yeah, it is. It's just a more expensive one. But guys, that's what I would definitely do. I would go through each one, tick them all off, make sure they're relevant, and then just as a final sensor check, look at the price on the way down. Um, so the next mistake, I'm just going to stay in Jungle Scout for this one. The next mistake is when you're looking at your Jungle Scout data, not actually analyzing it properly. A lot of people, what they do is they'll just load up Jungle Scout and then they'll just look at this top section and they'll go, oh great, average monthly sales, 195, average price, 12 pound 30, brilliant. Um, I want to do this product. You need to actually do a bit more analysis than that. Um, again, on the previous video that I've done that I linked up here earlier on, um, I teach you how to do that, but essentially you need to make sure that the sales and the daily and monthly sales columns are consistent. So ideally five or more sellers are doing well. Um, you need to make sure that the price looks right across the board and it's not just an average figure. And you need to make sure that overall um, the reviews aren't absolutely sky high, like over a thousand or something like that. So those are all the different things that I would look at. Um, and as mentioned, I, if you don't really understand how to do that, I would go back and watch my video, uh, which details how to do Jungle Scout research properly. The next mistake that I see quite a lot when people are doing product research is they'll send me a product, the sales will look great, and they'll say to me, Jansen, what do you think? Should I go ahead with this? And I'll ask, well, are you actually differentiating? How are you able to add value? How are you able to give the customer something that they can't already get? And more often than not, uh, people say, well, I don't really know. Guys, you can't just copy and paste other people's products. Maybe in the older days when Amazon wasn't so competitive, but now it is an absolute jungle. There are people that if you do that will just end up cutting their price and it'll just be a price war all the way to the bottom. So what you need to do in order to be able to protect yourself from that is to come up with an idea as to how you can make your product better. And that could be by bundling, so including a free complimentary add-on item that goes well with the product. It could be having much better photos and a much better listing. It could be through much better branding. There's so many different things that you can do to make sure that your listing stands out. If you just copy another listing and you don't really add any value, why would a customer choose you? You know, you put yourself in the customer's shoes. If you log on online and you see a listing that hasn't got many reviews, and it just looks bang average compared to another one that's got lots and lots of reviews, then it's unlikely that you're gonna pick the, the new one. So that is my uh, number one tip here, guys. Make sure you're differentiating. And in addition to that, when you do do that, then you're protecting yourself somewhat because it means that if there are any price wars, so if a competitor of yours starts lowering your price, well, you can still justify having a slightly higher price because your product's better, it's differentiated, you've got a bundle item, whatever. So that is my number one tip here, guys. Make sure you differentiate, don't copy and paste. Now, the next one is looking for products, finding products that don't have a good profit margin. Now, what is a good profit margin? Well, that's for you to decide, but in my opinion, a good profit margin is something that's 30% or higher, and that's after all of Amazon's fees. Now. 
If you don't know how to work out your profit margin, come and join me in the Amazon FBA Smashers group and there is a unit price calculator and that will do it all for you. Um, but guys, please make sure you've got a healthy profit margin because by the time you factor in costs that you may well have forgotten about, like pay-per-click advertising and refund charges and VAT and all sorts of things like that, you're not going to be left with much left on the table. I've seen it happen time and time again. People go in with products with like 15 or 20% profit margin and before they know it, they're making like 0.5% profit or even a small loss. And it just means the whole thing is not going to be worthwhile. So make sure you've got a 30% profit margin. That's another mistake that I see time and time again. And then finally, and again, this is a big one, and this is the number one reason that people just can't find products for Amazon FBA. And it is the fact that they're just looking for a perfect product. Guys, a perfect product doesn't exist, okay? So both of my products um, that I've done really, really well, so my first one that sold out in two weeks and you know was flying off the shelves at Christmas, it is by no means a perfect product. There's like quite a few little small things that you know aren't absolutely perfect, but at the end of the day, when I was doing my product research, I was confident that customers would overlook those issues and would still buy. I get so many students emailing me brilliant ideas. They email me so many good product ideas, and then I say, you know, that sounds really good. Do some more research, do your tracking, contact suppliers. And then a week later, they'll message me and say, I changed my mind because of this, or I changed my mind because it wasn't that, or it didn't do that, or it looked like that. And I'm just like, you know, I'm, I just think to myself, you're never gonna find a product if you kind of are always looking for something that ticks 10 out of 10 boxes. You need to be looking for a product that ticks say six or seven out of the, out of the key criteria um, boxes. Just as an example there, think of the iPhone. So it's one of the top selling phones in the world. Is it a perfect product? No, not by a long shot. There's loads of things wrong with it. Like the battery life's poor. Sometimes the software crashes, all things like that. But that doesn't make it a bad product. So keep that in mind there, guys, when you're doing your product research, don't be looking for something that's gonna blow you know, the socks off of absolutely everybody because I promise you, you're gonna be looking for a long, long time. So guys, those are the seven most common mistakes that I most frequently see with my students and with people in the Smashers group. So run through this video again, make sure when you're doing your product research, you like take a screenshot of this or write them down um, and just kind of refer to them when you are doing your research and make sure that you're not making those mistakes that so many other people do. So guys, that's it for this week. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to give me a like and you can also subscribe to the channel uh, and make sure you tick that notification bell so you're alerted when I do upload new videos. That's it for this week, guys. I'll see you next time.